Um, if it's okay with everyone, can we just go five minutes into the coffee break so we get a, a full 30 minutes? So if, if, if you're all okay with that, just I'll keep it to uh, just five minutes over. So here we go. Thank you. Hello. Um, Thank you. Hello. Le, um, I will present... Um, an, um, an presentation about uh, domain-specific language. Uh, I am French, huh, so uh, sorry for uh, my mistake. Huh. <laughs> le, this title, DSL, the absolute weapon of the development, is a little bit provocative. It's, uh, I explain that. Oh, for us, for me, what is a domain-specific language? We can identify two two types of language. Le, um, there are certainly another category, but um, in the presentation it is logical. General purpose language, such as uh, Smalltalk, Java, C++, uh, and, and so on. And domain-specific language. Domain-specific language is possible. Um, Perl uh, is a possible domain-specific language. But in this presentation, I um, try to explain how to create domain-specific language for essentially business activity. So, the, the problem with general purpose language is how to, um, to separate le, the technical aspect and functional aspect. Actually, if you use Smalltalk or Java in a classical way, we mm, create an object model. We mm, design the application. We develop the application. But finally, how the, the dictionary, the, the knowledge of the, the expert of the, the area. In the object model, difficult. If we create a real domain specific language, it is able to um, create word that represent, uh, represent exactly the, the area, the rules in the area. Uh, for example, uh, in uh, insurance, industry simulation, um, salary management, for it's a uh, good example. Salary management, um, calculation for salary is uh, sometimes very, very complex. Uh, rules in the insurance is very complex too. So, it is easy to create an object model to um, make face of the uh, entirely rules of um, insurance. Yes. But what is the complexity? It's very high. So we prefer think not in um, object-oriented system, but in just word. A word for an action, a word for a subject, and nothing more. Object-oriented concept is just, for us, a technical layer. Um, for example, an um, iteration is a technical layer. When you develop in the functional area, in the, um, with the domain-specific language, we use not a technical iteration, but a word 
to produce this iteration. So the, the developer in the functional area doesn't know how to create an iteration in Smalltalk or Java or so on. The goal. Actually, the, it is a, a resume of the situation. Le, it is, um, for customers, it is obli an obligation to have um, a good process. So I list the, the, the process. Analysis method, modular development, okay, with uh, agile uh, method when uh, we see uh, it uh, today. Advice for uh, write good code. Application generator, if it is possible, test, debugger, tracer, and so on. But they are not a semantic approach with this. It is always a technical approach. The problem to, to create application uh, now, today, it is to respond to market reactivity, uh, reduce development time in, uh, and uh, sometimes uh, it's a very, it's a big compression of uh, development time. Software are more and more complex. The cost is reduced by uh, very aggressive competitor in whole area. But in finally, we must deliver quality and reliability application. So, with this C here, yes. With this technical approach, it is difficult. With a semantic approach, we think not only in a technical way, but in expert way, in rules way, and word, just word. So, for example, the solution create real um, Domain specific language, how? Specialize um, in a maximum way the domain specific language with very specialized word. It is really more expensive than uh, traditional languages, and uh, it's a goal. It is more declaratory than imperative because the if you want to create um, a program with a uh, high level of um, parameterization, we, we use uh, traditionally XML format, for example. If you use DSL, it's not an obligation to use this, uh, this type of format because the, the word contain the logical, the functional and the logical. And it is possible to checking in the level of the word all property necessary to make that th this word works. So, suitable abstract abstraction or notation. I prefer a suitable notation. Declaratory formulation, XML Intention format or palliative or static language. L XML actually is um, declarative language, but essentially to mm, you, enfin, in use to um, produce parameter for um, complex uh, programs, say, uh, uh, as example S SAP, par exemple, for example. So, uh, an important question, what to make compared to how to make? It is prefer, enfin, I prefer the how to make. For this, 
actually um, when a developer that uses uh, Java uh, need a function they take Google they search the good library and uh, put the library in uh, the, the project and go it is better to create sorry, the good word for the good action and for the good rules it is simpler to um, make a good reutilizability of this word. If you have two projects, one developer use one library, the second developer use an another library for the same goal. If you have one word, the two developers use this word and, mm, and another thing. In fact, with domain-specific language, we can capture the, um, the domain field implicitly. Uh, Why use domain-specific language? Capture expertise in the domain is a really dedicated syntax. Why? Because um, when you create uh, algorithm an algorithm, um, different developers use different way. In the, the syntax is not homogeneous. With a, do, uh, a domain-specific language, the syntax will be uh, homogeneous. It is very easy to uh, memorize a lot of classes, a lot of methods, we really not. So we prefer um, say to the developer, this is the dictionary, this is the word, this is the action of the word, just use that, nothing more. So not uh, of uh, bookshop of heavy uh, class to know. If the domain specific language is um, good to realize, normally it is very expressive to uh, realize the program. I'll show you uh, an example after. When the object oriented concept when, uh, is, uh, was created, the one goal is a reusable reusability of uh, class and method. In reality, it is not real, really true. So with uh, domain-specific language, it is an obligation. The reusability is um, an obligation. <laughs> no, another, no, another term. We have a separation of uh, concept of technical layer and functional layer, systematically. So the integration of the information system, it is the, the third question uh, ask uh, director of uh, information system. Okay, uh, good concept, good concept, fine, but uh, it is intrusive or not. We make the choice of uh, VisualWorks because the VisualWorks uh, offer a lot of uh, library to uh, link uh, with uh, another uh, system, another languages. And we create a semantic middleware. Why a semantic middleware? This middleware is able to connect the domain-specific language to an another language, same as Java. So if a developer creates a library in Java, it is possible to reuse this library and to transform uh, in uh, finally this library in Word, in functional Word. In fact, the, um, there are no disturbance of the application for the, for the customer. What's the added value 
added value of uh, bird technology. Uh, you choose uh, XelWorks uh, because it's um, it's a real language as uh, whole small talk. Alors, uh, I uh, I separate uh, Java for me is not really a language is a syntax a technical syntax -y. and small talk is a real language. Why? Because when uh, you when we speak, we use uh, French or English. We have a we have a dictionary with the explanation of word, and the explanation of word is in the language. The explanation of French word is right in French. It is possible to make that with small talk. It's not possible to make that in Java. If you want to create a domain-specific language with Smalltalk, no problem. Smalltalk offers all you need. If you want to create a domain-specific language with Java, it's not possible. You, it is an obligation to create, in first time, an interpreter. So it is why you, we choose Smalltalk, that works, because it's, a, for us, a real language. Human factor, it is uh, an, an important uh, point. Um, when I uh, see my, uh, my experiments, I can uh, see uh, two categories of developers, um, technical developers and functional developers. The first category uh, take pleasure to resolve uh, complex algorithms, um, difficult uh, point, and the second category take pleasure to produce the software, produce quick and well the software. So when we create a domain-specific language, we affect the technical developer for the creation, for the development of the world, and functional developer for the use of the world, and only use the world. You can uh, see the follow. And it is the end of the presentation. I make a little example. I create an another diapositive. And a little example. Okay. Um, when we uh, a good example of uh, domain-specific language is uh, in uh, in Smalltalk, uh, Active Records. It's uh, for us the the final layer, the final technical layer. After. Uh, we enter in a real domain-specific language, in a pure domain-specific language. Oh, for example, when we uh, write an okay. okay, we create an employee. Perfect. We. To delete an employee, delete, okay. To find an employee, we have this word, find all, we retrieve all the employee. And it is good in a real domain specific language, find all, okay, we retrieve the, the list of the employee. But um, for uh, enter a criteria of search, we need to enter a block of code. It is too complex. It is a technical layer. It is not good for developer in functional area. So for the this uh, type of developer, it is preferred to find commercial. commercial. 
we retrieve all the commercial and that's all don't uh, write find uh, and a specific code block with a criteria uh, and that's it this is a very little uh, example if you have question When developing uh, a DSL, often people um, are wondering about uh, possible uh, tools that will help them use this DSL letter. So uh, a text editor, a debugger, and things like that. So is there anything you would like to say about the possible tools? Uh uh, in fact, for, for create uh, domain-specific language, you use, uh, we use exclusively VisualWorks. Why? Because with VisualWorks and uh, another small talk or uh, Lisp, for example, we can create all the technical layers and finally the domain specific language in the functional layers. I'm, I'm more talking about uh, using uh, the DSL and not uh, developing the DSL. How do you use the DSL? Uh, do you create tools? for the user to use the DSL or? No, it's not necessary because for the functional developer, it is uh, very easy to, to use um, in the environment, uh, in the small talk environment. Because the, um, the sentences is very short. It's uh, just subject, verb, complement, or verb, complement, or subject, verb. So it's very easy. The problem is that when you debug uh, such uh, such programs written using your DSL, you debug not at the level of the DSL, but of the level of the host of language. Yes, you of small talk. The, the debugging uh, make in the technical layers, but not in the domain-specific language. Why? Because um, take the, the principle that domain-specific language is pure and perfect. It is not possible to have bug in um, in the world. If you have bug in the world, all of the system is uh, is fragile, uh, fragile. So we, it is an obligation to test word by word, and interaction between all word, if that makes sense. A subject makes sense with certain verbs, but not all the verbs. When we when we search commercial, it is okay for an employee, but not for uh, another um, category of uh, classes, for example. for my English. I'm not sure.